the LEGO Technic Lieber Crawler Crane LR13000 retails for $700, but I believe it's worth it, and I will tell you the reason at the end of the video. It's a set unlike any other. The sheer size, coupled with advanced pulley mechanisms, make it quite the sight to behold. To understand how it works, let's start with the absolutely massive box, which contains 2,883 pieces. Upon opening the box, you'll find five smaller white ones inside. The largest of them contains all of the numbered bags. Two of them contain a ton of frames, while the third one contains a bunch of curved gear racks as well as some frames and linkages. The best one has six large angular motors, two hubs packaged in white boxes, and 24 of these brand new counterweights. The white envelope holds a reasonably sized sticker sheet and two sets of instructions. The first one has some cool information about the real crane, but no mention of the designer of this set, unfortunately. The new frames have reinforcing sticks on the inside, which is awesome. The building process starts by connecting a beam with a frame to a large angular motor. Reinforce it with some beams and connect two pairs of gears to the motor. Insert a 12-tooth one into the motor and some 24-tooth gears on the sides. Connect a beam on top as well as two 20-tooth gears on the axles. All of the gears meshing together simply looks astonishing. Attach two sets of frame structures on either side. Use a small black frame to connect two yellow ones together. Build a second copy of this structure and use them to expand the chassis outwards. Four frames connected by lift arms reinforce it. Some curved gear racks stack together to form a circle, and this attaches on top of the chassis. An octagon with moving wheels goes on top along with another gear circle. Some 28 tooth gears end up connecting the motor to the circle. It's important to note that the motor drives the circle rather than the turntable like what we saw with the previous Lieber excavator. The turntable which goes on top is not connected by gears, and it's here purely for stability. After some panels reinforce everything, the turn base looks amazing. A bunch of bevel gears insert into the 3x19 frame, and a grey one secures the gears. Two of these are built up and they connect together. Use a grey frame to secure their connection. Some triangular panels attach on the sides, and two of these massive track modules are constructed before being secured to the the chassis. The lever panel smooths out the front and a sprocket along with some gears insert into a triangular panel. These simply connect the chassis. The driving sections start with a planetary wheel hub which connects to a large angular motor. Secure it with some beams and add two gear pairs which increase the torque. Reinforce them with a flip-flop beam and add a sprocket to the hub. Make sure you build an exact replica but mirrored and attach these to the rear of the chassis. Connect some gears to the motor section and smooth it out with panels. Attach two frames with bevel gears and then simply use panels. Do the same thing on the other side. The hub comes loosely on these blue pins and connect the motors to the respective ports. Place the chassis onto a pair of tracks, wrap them around, and it's time to test this behemoth with the app. Honestly, this could be used as a chassis for your own tank creations. Take several panels and connect three frames onto them. Then connect a turntable to the three frames and make sure you have two of these. After you secure them to the sides of the frame section, connect that structure onto the top of the chassis. And what do we use to reinforce and expand the superstructure? That's right! more frames. A 90 degree frame section goes inside and expands it. Insert two white balls into the sockets and attach them onto a frame. This ends up serving as the support structure. Two flip-flop beams attach onto single frictionless pins and some yellow ones serve as trusses. Insert a gear rack into this light blue housing and attach several pieces to it. Secure this part to those flip-flop beams and add a pair of rubber bands. A yellow frame section serves as the reinforcement and the black and gray frames will hold the counterweights. Building this set already feels like we are working with nothing but frames, and we still haven't even started on the booms. These three large angular motors connect in a single line to the side, place a hub onto the flip-flop beams and connect the motors to the ports. Notice how pulling the gear rack tilts the hub. Connect a triangular frame to the back of the superstructure. This yellow box, which is comprised of four yellow frames, attaches onto a beam structure and is reinforced with more triangular frames. This connects right above those turntables. I love how there are shock absorbers used here. It's something completely unexpected. Connect two more of those yellow boxes and secure a gray triangular frame along with some beams and blocks. This lengthens the stabilizer. Link it to the gear rack which tilts the hub. And add some extra linkers to that rear gray frame. Let's build up the main boom which consists of a yellow box, gray frames and some blocks. Connect this to those turntables. Attach three more yellow boxes together and add some links with a pulley set. Use 
it to extend the boom up. Carefully thread a length of wire through the pulleys and there is actually a video within the Control Plus app itself showing you how to do that which is incredibly helpful. Connect the spool to the red angular motor, you can test this functionality during the building process. The jib joint is built out of nothing but those grey triangular frames and this goes on top of the boom. Use several links to attach it to the bottom and once again carefully thread the wire. I found the videos to be very helpful so thank you LEGO for making that part easier. Attach this spool to the white motor, connect several more of those yellow boxes and use them to expand the jib. And now we can start paneling up the crane. Add a cabin here, use several Technic panels as well as system tiles to cover up the motor. Connect some fake lights to the front. Attach a spool to the third motor and the following hook gets attached to the string. After you thread it, bring the string back to the motor and use a fourth spool to connect it to that same third motor. Put a total of 24 counterweights on the back of the superstructure. Wow! Just look at this behemoth! And I will have a comparison of between this and all of the previous Technic crawler cranes on my channel the day after tomorrow. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. No pressure though, no pressure. First of all, you can of course move the tracks, which are actually quite powerful since the power passes from the motor through a pair of 12 over 20 gears and then through the planetary hub itself. I even drove it through some decently deep water and despite the hub getting wet, it never broke and the model still functions perfectly, although I don't recommend it. I strongly dislike how the hub is not securely attached here. The loose pins were probably used to make it easier to change batteries, but LEGO could have simply used the pins with stop bushes and the problem would have been solved. The hub can sometimes pop out during play, which is quite annoying. Despite using that ball support at the back of the superstructure, it can actually turn surprisingly well. Of course, it ends up carving out a circle around the crane and don't worry, if the superstructure is blocked, the gears will not crack. Rather, the motor simply stalls. If you love taking your LEGO Technic sets outdoors like I do, eventually over time, the white balls will simply stop moving and it's almost impossible to take them out, so good luck cleaning them. Those stabilizing shock absorbers are quite helpful if you're dealing with heavier loads. And I love that the hub can tilt. Basically, the more weight there is on the hook, the more the hub tilts. So using the internal gyroscope, this crane can actually measure the weight of the load on the hook. Unfortunately, the Control Plus app just provides you with a useless color indicator. I genuinely expected to see a weight measurement in actual units, like grams or ounces. It is actually a very easy program to make in the Powered Up app, so you can definitely try to do it yourself. The functions of the superstructure structure can be divided into three parts, the boom, the jib, as well as the hook. Each one is simply controlled by a motor directly connected to a spool. There are absolutely no gears and it's the simplest connection you could possibly imagine. I think that there should have been at least worm gears here since that would allow essentially to keep the strings mechanically locked at all times unless the motors are moving. Still, the motors themselves do a good job of staying in place even during very heavy loads. Watching those spools release and wind up their strings and watching those blocks and pulleys move give you an indescribable feeling. Yes, this model has no gearbox, which is normally a bad thing. However, all of those incredibly advanced pulleys certainly make up for that. Most people complain about the proportions of this set, since if you look at the real-life counterpart of this crane, its booms are way taller relative to its chassis. While that's true, I still think that it's tall enough. When I was transporting it, I had to lower it and maybe twist it a little to get it through doors. So, a 2 meter model would have been practically impossible to transport without some sort of disassembly. However, on BrickLink, you'll simply be able to buy those yellow frames and just make the boom taller yourself. It'll be an exceptionally easy process and I'll definitely have a modification video out like that as soon as possible. There are real problems with the set which have absolutely nothing to do with its proportions. The first problem is the addition of the rear support and those white balls. They often just end up tilling the land you're driving on, they look like a last minute addition and they're just annoying to deal with. The second one is that on outdoor terrain the tracks will often snap if you turn it in one spot. This was something that was also present on the Cat D11 bulldozer but it's much worse on the Lieber crane. The third problem is all 
all about the counterweights. First of all, they're not attached with any pins to the crane. They just sit on top of the superstructure completely loosely. As a result, they often end up falling during play and it's annoying to put them back on again. Second, I feel like they're not heavy enough. They are way too light. In order to lift the 8043 motorized excavator, I actually had to take out its power functions battery box and put it on the crane where the counterweights are. The lever could easily lift. Much much more weight, but it's just not heavy enough at the back. Since there are support balls at the back anyway, why not just make it as heavy as possible? And I would have liked to see a Derek Ballast to manage higher load capacities. Speaking of the counterweights, they are actually made out of plastic with a matte finish as opposed to glossy like on most other LEGO pieces, and unlike normal plastic, they actually sink to the bottom, which makes me think that there is metal inside. The app itself is quite nice, featuring two sliders at the bottom, a slider at the top left and two joysticks in the middle. You can swap the joysticks and the swapping capability should have been included in the Audi RS Q e-tron as well as all other Control Plus cars. If you press this button, the joysticks will not return to center and the model will continue to function even if you stop giving any inputs. The other button is safety, so that the crane will stop lifting if it's about to tip. I never turn it on since it removes all of the fun. To tell you the truth, I genuinely believe that it is actually worth the $700. Although it has only 2,883 pieces, which puts it at a price to parts ratio of a whopping 24 cents per piece. The reason there are so few pieces is because a ton of them are large frames. Even if we completely ignore the booms, remember how in the building process, both the chassis and the superstructure were shown to be comprised of almost nothing but frames? Let's assume that LEGO was not allowed to use any frames, and had to manually build out everything with beams and other small pieces. The number of pieces would have skyrocketed, while the overall size would remain the same. It could easily reach 5 or 6,000 pieces without frames, and at that point, the $700 price point would seem far more reasonable. Even if this set was not provided to me by LEGO, I would still act like Fry and buy one. Shut up and take my money! That's because I genuinely love LEGO Technic, and this set gave me an experience unlike any other, both in terms of building it as well as actually playing with it. Will you be getting this set, or are the problems I mentioned a deal breaker? Please let me know in the comments below. This is your Unbreak Me here, and I'll see you in the next one.